Expenses by August Wilson. Introduction by Lloyd Richards. Fences is the second major play of a poet turned playwright, August Wilson. One of the most compelling storytellers to begin writing for the theaters in many years, he has taken the responsibility of telling the tale of the encounter of, a, of the released black slaves with a vigorous and ruthless growing America decade by decade. Fences encompasses the 1950s and a black family trying to put down roots in the slag slippery hills of a middle American urban industrial city that one might correctly mistake for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. To call August Wilson a storyteller is to align him at one and the same time with the ancient aristocrats of dramatic writing who stood before the tribes and made compelling oral history into lesson, legend, as well as with the modern playwrights who bring an audience to their feet at the end of an evening of their work because that audience knows they have encountered themselves, their concerns, and their passions, and have been moved and enriched by the experience. In Fences, August Wilson tells the story of four generations of Black Americans and of how they have passed on a legacy of morals, mores, attitudes, and patterns through stories with and without music. He tells the story of Troy Maxson, born to a sharecropper father who was frustrated by the fact that every crop took him further into debt. The father knew himself as a failure and took it out on everyone at hand, including his young son Troy and his wives, all of whom leave him. Troy learns violence from him, but he also learns the value of work and the fact that a man takes responsibility for his family, no matter how difficult circumstances may be. He learns respect for a home, the importance of owning land, and the value of an education because he doesn't have one. An excellent baseball player, Troy learns that in the land of equal opportunity, chances for a black man are not always equal and that the same country that deprived him asked sacrifice of his brother in World War II and got it. Half his brother's head was blown away and he is now a disoriented and confused, beautiful man. He learns that he must fight and win the little victories that, given his life, must assume the proportion of major triumphs. He learns that to take a chance and grab a moment of beauty can crumble the delicate fabric of an intricate value system and leave one desolate and alone. Strength of body and strength of purpose are not enough. Chance and the color of one's skin, chance again, can tip the balance. You've got to take the crooked with the straight, he says. Troy Maxson spins yarns, raps, tells stories to his family and friends in that wonderful environment of the pre-television, pre-air-conditioned era when the back porch and the backyard were the platform for some of the most exciting tales of that time. From this platform and through his behavior, he passes on to his extended family principles for living, which members of his family accept or refute through the manner in which they choose to live their own lives. How this is reformed criminal perceived? What should be learned from him? What accepted? What passed on? Is his life to be discarded? or honored. 
That is the story of fences, which we build to keep things and people out or in.